It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Denny Kramer. So, Denny, you get radically uh, born from above. You have an encounter with the Messiah, and you're going to a nice church, and all of a sudden you start getting very specific dreams. Tell me about the first one you remember. First spiritual dream that I ever had. I had been a believer for a couple years and went to bed and had a dream. And in the dream, there was a husband and wife couple from our church, both of whom I knew. And in the dream, this woman uh, reports to me that she was having a physical problem. And it was sort of a personal, private area of her body. But she said to me, this part of my body is not working well. And I woke up. So I saw her the next night at church. And I said, by the way, Bonnie, I had a dream last night. Listen to this. In the dream, you walked up to me and you said, Denny, this part of my body is not working well. And I just want to tell you, Bonnie, that, that God wants to heal your body. Does that mean anything to you? She said, last night, the same night I had the dream. Last night, I went to my husband and said, that certain part of my body is not working, honey. I've got to go to the doctor. It's the very conversation that I had with my husband the night before. And I said, you're joking. She said, oh, no. You, you were as shocked as she was. Absolutely. So once that started, you knew that those dreams were not pizza. Correct. Those dreams were God speaking to you. But when did it start that you could just put your hand on someone and begin to see, as you explained to me, snapshots of, of what God's speaking, past, present, and future? Well, uh, as much as a, a gift is given, as much as it is an endowment, uh, it is also a, a skill, and skills uh, need time to develop. So everyone's gift is going to start at a lower level and through practice, 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 become bigger and better. So I just began to practice. I began to have a dream and then another dream. Uh, I began to have visions. I began to know things and stuff about people. And as I gave those things that I felt God had given me for other people, the accuracy uh, began to grow. Gifts are like muscles. The more you use them, the more you exercise them, the bigger they become. So now after almost 34 years of doing this, my gift has grown over the years through practice, practice, practice. Well, let me take you back a few years, and this gift starts operating, and, and you are told uh, a certain young woman is going to be your wife. Tell me about that. Well, uh, I had learned hey, excuse that... Excuse me, we have a word from our sponsor. God has just told me someone is healed that is watching us right now. If you will move your neck, just move your neck if you had pain. <laughs> Don't bother doing it if you did. But move your neck if you had pain, and you'll find the pain is gone. And if you had back pain, just bend over, and you'll see the pain is gone. And if you really want to, you have a hip problem, just run around the living room. Okay, Denny, you, you, you're told about who will be your wife. What do you do with this information? Well, as I said, God had given me prophecies for other people. I was relatively comfortable about that, but I had never really had God speak to me about me in this manner. I had dated this uh, young gal. In fact, I had one date with her, one date. That date was four months prior. So after having one date, not seen her for four months, I was simply praying about her one night. And her name was Diane. So I said, Lord, I'm not really interested in dating this gal, beautiful as she is, unless it's your will. So I said, I just want you to know that I'm praying about Diane. As soon as I spoke her name, words uh, came out of heaven in the form of a vertical teletype. Right out of heaven. And they went into my head. I saw them. And the words said, I'm going to give you, Diane, to be your wife. Well, I thought that's all anyone would need to know, including Diane. <laughs> so I ran downstairs, called her up, and I said, hi, this is Denny Kramer. Oh, yes, hi, Denny. Now, remember, one date four months earlier. Uh, how you doing, Diane? Doing well. And uh, I said, I just thought I'd call you to let you know that I've been praying lately. Oh, she said, what have you been praying about? And I said, well, I've been praying about you. Oh, and then I said, and God spoke to me. Oh, she said, well, what could God say? And, and I said, well, God said, I'm going to give you, Diane, to be your wife. 
I fully expected her to say, yippee, hallelujah. <laughs> In fact, she said, and I quote, but I don't even like you. Oh, my goodness. That had to be really <laughs> crushing. Crushing. I didn't know then what I know now, that God needed to speak to her as well as me. I waited on that word. Three or four months later, we ran into each other again. Then a couple weeks later, we ran into each other again. We had a date. We had a, a cookout. We had a hike. We uh, hung out. And this was now August of 74. And I said on the 13th of August, 1974, uh, I still feel that God spoke to me. And I still feel that we're to get married. What do you think? And she said, oh, yeah. God spoke to me two weeks ago. We were engaged August 13th of 1974 and celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary this past November. But you, you know, Danny, if that had happened to me and, and the woman, I said, God just told me you're supposed to marry me. And the woman had said, uh, uh, I'm not interested in you. I think she said you're not even her type. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and I would have been so crushed. I might never prophesy again. Oh, I again. was crushed. I was devastated. How could you prophesy anymore? I was that? crushed. I was devastated. But I had to learn a lesson that the Bible says there is a, a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. And it says that there is a due season for everything God says. I simply got ahead, way ahead of the due season. Right when it was the due season, God spoke to my uh, fiance, my wife, and we were then married. Well, Denny wants to mentor you in the gift of prophecy. How many people can prophesy that are watching us right now? All born again, spirit filled believers. Any exceptions? None. None. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Danny Kramer. And uh, I love the fact that Danny's calling is to demystify prophecy so you all can prophesy. Uh, that's not original. That's right in the Bible. But demystifying it, it uh, Danny, tell me about the miracle at Mulberry. Just an outstanding example, Sid, of the power of prophecy. Uh, one man called prophecy a miracle of utterance. Now, we get excited about miracles and finances and miracles of healing and miracles of deliverance. Prophecy is a miracle, but just a miracle of utterance. I was speaking at a Methodist church, pastored by a spirit-filled guy, but a Methodist church, a church full of Methodists, Sid, and I stood up to demonstrate the prophetic. He said, don't speak in tongues, it'll freak them all out, but stand up and prophesy over our membership. So I stood up, a young married couple, uh, and they had never been in a prophetic meeting before, didn't know what a prophet was, what one did, uh, but I stood them up. They were at that time in their mid to late 30s. They had been married 17 years. And when I stood them up, I saw barrenness over top of her. It was like a film, a cloud, a haze over her. And when now, well, I, how did you know the film or the cloud or the haze meant barrenness? Because I've done it for so many years. I knew I what that meant. I knew okay. what it symbolized. So I said, among other things, and I rebuke barrenness off of you. You will be fruitful and multiply, and I will come back to this church one day and hold your babies, plural, in my arms. Well, the church erupted because I found out after the meeting they had been married 17 years. They had gone through several regiments of therapy uh, for barrenness. All had failed, and they had resigned to the fact that they'd have to adopt children. 